Are you getting a clunking noise while driving from the front of your car? In particular, a knocking noise while driving over bumps? And one common reason is your lower wishbone ball joint. If this is worn, you'll get a wishbone knocking noise. Now I've got that problem on my car, so I'm going to show you the effects and show you how to change a wishbone. Stay safe, check your car up, make sure to support it on a suitable axle stand, make sure the handbrake is on nice and tight, and chock a suitable uh, rear wheel. I'll waggle the wheel side to side here, like this, while you take a look at what that does to the ball joint underneath. Here's the wishbone lower ball joint. If I now waggle the wheel, Can you see that ball joint moving? The main symptom that you'll get, particularly in the early stages of wear, is a, is a light knocking noise, which eventually develops into a heavy knocking noise coming from the front of the car. If you take a listen to this, that's my ball joint knocking on a piece of tarmac just up the road. Depending on what your car you've got, it may cause you a vibration problem. It's dangerous because as the ball joint wears, the, uh, the shaft where the, it connects to the ball joint could snap. If that were to happen, your whole wheel system would just fold outwards from the car and that would cause a crash. On some cars, you can replace this ball joint independently. Uh, unfortunately, on these Saabs, you have to replace the whole wishbone. We'll get to that right now. To release the ball joint from the steering knuckle, use an E14 socket on one end of this bolt and a 16 mm hex socket on the other end. You'll find you'll either need a deep 16 mm socket or a short extension to get past the uh, steering arm. With an 18 mm socket and an 18 mm spanner on the other end, undo the front bush bolt and remove the nut all the way off and with your 18 millimeter spanner and 18 millimeter socket again remove the two vertical bolts that hold the rear wishbone bush holder into place that's the bolts that go through this bush and remove both nuts and bolts uh, a decent length breaker bar and some penetrating oil is uh, well worth having. As too is a magnetic pickup because the nut could end up loose on the top of the chassis once you've got the bolt out. On the lower ball joint with the nut undone to the end of the clamp bolt tap the clamp bolt out. It might be a good idea to use a drift. Alternatively if you're uh, struggling to drift it out put your E14 socket on the other end and turn it in the undo direction. Again, copious quantities of penetrating oil is very useful here. Now we just need to separate this ball joint from the hub carrier. You may find that you can do that with a crowbar or you might find you need a ball joint splitter. It's also a big help if you can drive a wedge or a chisel into the gap at the bottom of the hub there. If you can open that out just a fraction, allow it to let go of the ball joint shaft. If like me, this has corroded on, then it can take a lot of effort to get it off. Uh, I, I smacked in a ball joint splitter and a large uh, chisel. And as you saw, I used a small chisel into the shaft housing. Remove your last couple of loose bolts, use a wedge of some description to pull the front bush out of its housing and the whole thing comes forward and off like so. Now depending on which side of the car you're actually doing, on the left side of this car connected to here there's a little arm that connects to uh, a sensor so as the suspension goes up and down the arm moves on the sensor. The sensor is fixed to body position. Uh, the purpose of that sensor is uh, a suspension height uh, sensor for the Xenon headlight system. Before you put the new arm back on, 
use a round wire brush and clean up the uh, the hole that receives that receives the new ball joint shaft. I'll put links to some of these tools down in the description. Reassembly now, as they say in all the best workshop manuals, is the reverse of disassembly. Might need your hammer to give it a few taps just to get it in place. It's my suggestion that when you're putting the arm back into place, you put the inner bushes into place first, put the bolt through the front bush uh, loosely, put the nut on it, but don't tighten it up. You can tighten up the two bolts on the rear bush bracket though. Then lift the ball joint up by hand, then get your jack underneath it and use your jack to lift it the rest of the way. Now as you're lifting it with your jack, try to put the bolt through that holds it into place. Lift a little bit at a time, waggle the lower end, make sure that it's going into the into the hub. Remember there's a groove on the ball joint shaft that the bolt has to pass through. Help it along with a few gentle hammer taps. And if that doesn't work, screw it in using your E14 socket. And tighten the nut up with your 16mm socket. Now before you do the final tighten of the front bush bolt, put your jack back under the ball joint and lift the suspension until it's just taking the weight of the car. Yes, it's important to tighten up that bush in its normal operating position with the with the weight of the car on the suspension. Once you've tightened it up, let the suspension back down. Basically, the bush should be in its relaxed position when the car is sat on its suspension at its normal ride height. And that's it, all done. I hope you found that useful. If you did get some value from this, please give it a like down, uh, down by the title, and I'll see you next time.